Good evening. I'm Richard Halpern. And I'm Ansel Farage. The Collinsport Theatre of the Airwaves proudly presents our version of the Charles Dickens classic, A Christmas Carol, performed by members of the original cast of Dark Shadows. This radio version of A Christmas Carol was originally adapted and performed by Orson Welles and members of the Campbell Playhouse Theatre back in 1934 and became a holiday tradition since. And now, villagers, sit back and enjoy A Dark Shadows Christmas Carol. Jacob Marley was dead to begin with. There was no doubt whatever about that. The register of his burial was signed by the clergyman, the clerk, the undertaker, and the chief mourner. Scrooge signed it, and Scrooge's name was good upon anything he chose to put his hand to. Old Marley was as dead as a doornail. Scrooge knew he was dead? Of course he did. How could it be otherwise? Scrooge and Marley were partners for uh, I don't know how many years. Oh, but he was a tight-fisted hand to the grindstone, Scrooge. A squeezing, wrenching, grasping, clutching, covetous old sinner. Hard and sharp as flint. <laughs> ah, now, and once upon a time, uh, of all the good days of the year, on Christmas Eve, old Scrooge sat busy in his counting house a grim, cheerless place, if ever there was one. The door to Scrooge's counting house was open that he might keep his eye upon his clerk, Bob Cratchit, who in a cold and dismal little cell worked with his ledgers. Nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, Merry gentlemen, nothing you may say. Twenty-three, twenty-six, twenty-nine, nine, carry two. I'm Cratchit! Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Scrooge? Stop that infernal caterwauling. Uh, yes, sir. Merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Get away from my door! Oh, oh, no, let him sing! No. I'm gonna sing! Oh, oh, come on! Go somewhere else and belly your blasted carols, or I'll give you what for! Hi, Governor! It's an old custom at Christmas time, you know? Yes, and I don't want any of your old customs. Take your fella fools and go away. Christmas. Ah. Right, sir. Uh, Merry Christmas anyway, sir. Ah. Uh, now you get that letter from Higgins and Blackthorn, Cratchit. And then I want you to finish posting this ledger. And after that, you can pop over to Parsingales and tell Ephraim Parsingale that you come after the 17 shillings and sixpence he's owed me since Michaelmas. And tell him I shall have a constable over there if he doesn't pay up at once. Mr. Parthengill's wife has been ill, sir. Oh, uh, what do I care about his wife? I want my 17 and six. I, I just thought, being Christmas, sir, it... Well, hey, Christmas, Christmas. You mention that word to me once more, Bob Cratchit, and I will... A Merry Christmas, Uncle. Merry Christmas, Bob. Merry Christmas, Mr. Fred. God save you, Uncle. Ah, humbug. Christmas, a humbug, Uncle. Now I'm sure you don't mean that. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I mean just that. Exactly that. 
Merry Christmas. What right have you to be merry? What reason have you? You're poor enough. Well, what right have you to be dismal about Christmas, Uncle? You're rich enough. <laughs> ah, bah! Now, Uncle, don't be cross. Well, what else can I be when I live in such a world of fools? What's Christmas to you but a time for paying bills without money? Merry Christmas! A time for finding yourself a year older and not an hour richer. If I could work my will, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips would be boiled in his own pudding and buried with a stake of holly through his heart. He should. Uncle, uncle. Now, nephew, keep Christmas in your own way and let me keep it in mine. Keep it? Why, you don't keep it, uncle. Well, let me leave it alone then. What do you want? Hmm? A Christmas gift, I've no doubt. I came to wish you a Merry Christmas, Uncle. A Merry Christmas. Much good may Christmas do you. <laughs> Much good it ever has done you. Hmm? There are many things from which I derive good joy by which I have not profited materially. I yeah. dare say, Uncle, Christmas among the rest. Mm -hmm. But I have always thought of Christmas time as a good time, a kind, forgiving, charitable, pleasant time. And therefore, Uncle, it has never put a scrap of gold or silver in my pocket. I believe it has done me good and will do me good. And I say, God bless it. God bless Christmas. Hurrah! Yeah. Ah. Let me hear another sound out of you there, Bob Cratchit, and you'll keep your Christmas by losing your situation. As for you, nephew, I wonder why you don't go into the Parliament. You talk enough nonsense. Oh, don't be angry, Uncle. I want nothing from you. I ask nothing of you. Why can't we be friends? Good afternoon. I'm sorry you feel that way. Well, I tried. A Merry Christmas to you, Uncle. Good afternoon. And a Happy New Year, too. Ah, uh, a mug. And a Merry Christmas to you, Bob, and the missus, and to Tiny Tim. Oh, thank you, Mr. Phil. Same to you, sir. Good day, sir. Good day, Bob. Uh, nonsense. Twaddle flummery. Talking of Christmas and not two sixpence to jingle together in his trousers pocket. Hey, you there, Bob Cratchit. Come here. Mm. What are you doing there? I'm only putting a bit of coal in this fire, Mr. Scrooge, seeing it's cold in there, sir. You put that coal back into the scuttle. A fire. A fire indeed. I can tell you, if you use coal at that rate, you and I will soon be parting company, Bob Cratchit. You understand that? There's many a young fellow that would like your situation, you know. I'm sorry, sir. My fingers are getting cold, a little stiff with the cold. Well, then put on your mittens. Go on, see who it is. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Is this the firm of Scrooge and Marley? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, we would like to uh, see the head of the firm, if we may. Oh, very good, sir. What is it? This gentleman and lady are here to see you, sir. Huh? Have I the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? Mr. Marley has been dead these seven years tonight. Ooh. I'm Scrooge. Well now, Mr. Scrooge, at this season of the year, it's only fitting that we who are more fortunate should raise a fund to buy the poor some meat and drink and means of warmth. You may not believe it, sir, but many thousands are now in want of common necessities. Uh, and hundreds of thousands are in want of the simplest comforts. Ah, are there no prisons? 
Well, there are plenty of prisons, sir. And the workhouses. They're still in operation, I trust. We wish we could say they were not, but they are, sir. Uh, the treadmill and the poor law are in full vigor then. Hmm? Both very busy, sir. Ha ha! I'm glad to hear that. Hey! I was afraid, from what you said at first, that something had occurred to stop them in their useful course. Well, no, sir. All these institutions that you mention are flourishing, but it's nevertheless true that some uh, additional provisions for the poor and destitute must be made. Ah! Well, a few of us are endeavoring to raise such a fund, you see. So that being said, how much should we put you down for, Mr. Scrooge? Nothing. Oh, I see. You wish to be anonymous, sir. I wish to be left alone. I don't make merry myself at Christmas time, and I can't afford to make a lot of idle people merry. I help to support the establishments that take care of the poor. They cost enough. Let those who are badly off go there. Well, many can't go there, sir, and many others would rather die. And my advice to them is to do so and decrease the surplus population. Besides, I've only your word for it that all this is so. It's the truth, Mr. Scrooge. Well, so be it then. It's not my business. It's enough for a man to understand his own business and not to interfere with other people's. Mine occupies me constantly. Good afternoon. Well, we quite understand, Mr. Scrooge. Good afternoon. Cratchit, show this lady and gentleman out. Yes, sir. This way, please. Sir, madam, I couldn't help overhearing. I should like to contribute tuppence. Cratchit! Yes, sir. It isn't much, but it's all I can afford. But there are others in worse situations than I. You're a generous fellow. I wish I might say the same for your employer. Cratchit! Uh, yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Cratchit! And a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Get back to your work. Yes, sir. 31, 1, carry 3, a new scarlet tippet for Tiny Tim, a comb for Martha, the th 33, 30, and carry 3, hair ribbon for Belinda, 4, 7, 12, 15. Cratchit! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, it's, uh... Too late to have you go to Parthingills. You'll be closed up for Christmas like these other fools. We may as well close up the place now. Yes, sir. It is getting a little dark. Hard to see the figures. I, I suppose you'll want the entire day off tomorrow. Hmm? If it's quite convenient, sir. <laughs> It is not convenient, and it is not fair either. But I suppose I can't do anything about it. Hey, if, if I was to stop half a crown of your wages, you'd think yourself very ill-used, I would imagine. Hmm? Well, well, sir, I... I... Ah, yeah, but you don't think me ill-used when I pay a day's wages for no work, huh? It's only once a year, sir. Once a year? <laughs> once a year, indeed. A fine excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. But I suppose there's no good talking. You must have the whole day. Well, see that you're here all the earlier the next morning. You understand? 
Oh, I will, sir. I will. Indeed, I will. I will. Good night, sir. And Merry Christmas. Ah! The office was closed in a twinkling, and Bob Cratchit, with the long ends of his white comforter dangling below his waist, for he boasted no greatcoat, went down a slide on Cornhill twenty times in honor of its being Christmas Eve, then ran home to Camden Down as hard as he could to play with his family at Blind Man's Bluff. Scrooge, on the other hand, took his melancholy dinner in his usual melancholy tavern. Having read all the newspapers and planning to spend the rest of the evening with his banker's book, went to his dismal house. Darkness is cheap, and Scrooge liked it. The yard was so dark that even Scrooge, who knew its every stone, had to grope with his hands through the fog and the frost to find the door. And Scrooge walked through his rooms to see that all was right. Sitting room, bedroom, lumber room, all as they should be. Nobody under the table, nobody under the sofa, nobody under the bed nobody in the closet. Close the door. He locked himself in. In fact, he double locked himself in and took off his cravat. He put on his dressing gown, his slippers, and his nightcap, and sat down before the fire to take his grill. What was that? Something is coming. Some something is. Is coming closer. Outside my door. Ah! I won't believe it. It's humbug still. Ebenezer Scrooge. Ebenezer Scrooge. Ah. A spirit? A ghost? Oh, no. What do you want with me? I want much of you, Ebenezer. Who? Who are you? Ask me who I was. Oh, oh, oh. you're very particular for a ghost. All right, then. Who were you? In life, I was your partner, Jacob Marley. Jacob Marley? But you're dead. You died seven years ago. I, seven years ago this very night. <laughs> What's wrong, Ebenezer? Do you not believe in me? Uh, I do not. Doubt your own senses, Ebenezer? Yes, yes, yes. Because any slight thing may affect them. A slight disorder of the stomach makes them cheat. You... You can't be a ghost. No, oh, you, you may be an undigested bit of beef, or a plot of mustard, or a crumb of cheese, a fragment of an undone potato. There may be more gravy than grave about you. <laughs> Whatever you are. Ah, humbug, I tell you. Humbug. <laughs> I, 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 I do believe in you. You are a ghost, Jacob. Thank you, Ebenezer. Why do you walk the earth? Jacob, why do you come to me? Because it is required of every man that the spirit within him should walk abroad among his fellow men and travel far and wide to witness what it cannot share, but might have shared on earth and turned 
to happiness. Yes, but tell me, Jacob, what is that chain you wear around you? I wear the chain I forged in life. I made it, link by link, yard by yard, by my own free will. Is its pattern strange to you, Ebenezer? Cash boxes, keys and padlocks, ledgers and purses? Yours was as heavy and as long as this seven years ago. And you have labored on it ever since, Ebenezer. Oh, oh, Jacob. Speak comfort to me, Jacob. Comfort? Comfort, I have none to give. I cannot rest. I, I cannot stay. I, I cannot linger. Weary journeys lie before me. You travel fast. Yes, Ebenezer, on the wings of the wind. Ah, seven years dead and traveling all the time. Seven years, Ebenezer. Seven years of remorse. Ebenezer. Do you know that no space of regret can make amends for one life's opportunities misused? Uh, but you were always a good man of business, Jacob. Business? Mankind was my business. Charity, mercy, benevolence, they were all my business. The dealings of my trade were but a drop of water in the comprehensive ocean of my business. Jacob, Jacob, uh, don't take on so now, Jacob. Listen to me, Ebenezer. I'll listen to you, Jacob. Go on, Jacob. Now, speak to me. Ebenezer, I am here to warn you that you have yet a chance of hope of escaping my fate. Do you hear that, Ebenezer? Jacob, yes. You always were a good friend to me, Jacob. Thank you, Jacob. But, but go on, go on. Go on, go on. How shall I escape? Oh, God. I'm afraid, Jacob. You will be visited by three spirits. Is that the only chance and hope, Jacob? It is your only chance and hope. <laughs> well, then, I, I think I'd rather not. Without their visits, you cannot hope to avoid the path I tread. Expect the first spirit tonight when the bell tolls one. <sighs> Couldn't I take them all at once and have it over to you? <laughs> Ebenezer, take heed, for your own sake, that you remember what has passed between us. Remember, when the bell tolls one. Marley! Jacob Marley! Scrooge to work. He was lying on his bed, fully dressed, and suddenly the curtains of his bed were drawn aside, and Scrooge found himself face to face with the unearthly visitor who drew them. It was a strange figure, like a child, yet not so like a child as like an old woman. Its hair, which hung about its neck and down its back, was white as if with age. And yet the face had not a wrinkle in it and the tenderest bloom was on the skin. The arms were long and slender, the hands the same, yet their hold were of uncommon strength. Ebenezer Scrooge. Uh -huh. Who? Who are you? Ebenezer Scrooge, I have come for you. You are, are you the spirit? whose coming was foretold me? I am that spirit. Who? What are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. Long past? 
No, your past. But, but what do you want of me? What brings you here to haunt me? Your welfare, Ebenezer Scrooge. Rise and walk with me. Oh, no, 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 no. No! Not, not out of the window. Why, uh, I can't do that. I'll fall down. I'm not a spirit. I'm mortal, and I'll fall. Bear but a touch of my hand upon your heart, and you shall be upheld in more than this. Come, follow me. Where are we? What's become of this city? And there, there's snow upon the ground. Where are we? These are the shadows of the things that have been. Do you recognize this countryside? <laughs> oh, I, I know every inch of it. Every rock, every tree. And that bleak building over there? Ah, that building. Eh. I was a boy there. Yes. Yes, I went to school in that horrible place. Do you recollect that path? I, I could walk it blindfold. <laughs> Strange you should have forgotten it so many years. Come, let's go closer. Look through the window into that cold, barren room. What do you see, Ebenezer Scrooge? I see a boy. A solitary child, neglected by his family, alone. Yes, yes, I see. I know that boy. <sighs> that boy is myself. I was so lonely, poor boy. Your lip is trembling, Scrooge. <laughs> And what is that on your cheek? It's, it's, it's nothing, nothing at all. I wish I, ah, uh, it's too late now. What is the matter? Nothing, nothing. The waifs came to my door singing Christmas carols last night and there was a boy like that among them. A poor, pale, thin little boy in a ragged coat. I should like to have given him something. That's all. Is that all? Come, Ebenezer Scrooge. Let's see another Christmas. Oh, what a wonderful party. Oh, I love this time of year. You look marvelous. It's wonderful party. <laughs> oh. Do you know this place, Ebenezer Scrooge? <laughs> oh, know it. Know it. This is the counting house where I was apprenticed. <laughs> it's my old master. Ah, bless his heart, old Fezziwig, my master, alive again, and hosting one of his Christmas parties. <laughs> Take your partners. Oh, oh listen to him. Watch you, thread the needle and back to your places. <laughs> oh, and there's Dick Wilkins. Oh, poor Dick, dear, dear, dear. Yes, and look. Ah, there's Mrs. Fezziwig herself, looking younger than any of them. And the tables, oh, all loaded with roast and cider, mince pie, and beer. Oh, what a jolly time we used to have. <laughs> that carefree young man with the light heart and the cheerful smile. Do you recognize him? Yes, yes, yes. Merciful heaven. How happy I was then. A small matter for old Fezziwig to make those silly folks so full of joy. Oh, small matter. Small indeed. Isn't it? He has spent only a few pounds of your mortal money, 
Is that so much that he deserves praise? Oh, it's not that. It's not that spirit. Oh, Fezziwig has the power to make us happy or unhappy, to make our service light or heavy. His power lies in words and looks and in things so tiny that it's impossible to count them up. The happiness he gives is quite as great as if it cost a... Uh, uh, what is the matter? Oh, the... Nothing. Nothing at all, spirit. Mm, something, I think. No, no. Speak. Well, only it's just that I should like to be able to say a word or two to my clerk, Bob Cratchit. That's all. My time grows short, and we have yet another journey to make. Where now? Come. This is our last visit to the past, Ebenezer. Here in this little room, with a fair young girl by your side. Do you recognize yourself, Ebenezer? <laughs> no. 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 No, 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 spare me this. You're older now, a man in the prime of life. Your face has begun to wear the signs of care and avarice. Your eyes are the greedy, eager, restless eyes of a miser. No! No, please! That girl by your side, there are tears in her eyes. It matters little to you, very little, I know that. Belle! Have I changed toward you? When we were engaged, we were both poor. Was it better then? Better to be poor? Or better at least to be happy. You've changed. You were another man then. I was a boy. You blame me because I've grown wiser? Have I ever tried to break our engagement? In words, no, never. In what then? In a changed nature. In an altered spirit. In, in everything that made my love of any value in your sight. So, I release you from your promise. Bill! Oh, at first it may cause you pain to lose me. A very brief pain. The sooner it will fly, like a half-remembered dream, an unprofitable dream, and you will be glad to be awake from such a dream. Mm. May you be happy in the life you have chosen, Ebenezer, for the love of whom you once loved. That's enough. Show me no more. Take me home. These were the shadows of the things that have been. That they are what they are. Do not blame me. No. No more. No more. One shadow more. Do you see this man, Ebenezer Scrooge? This man might have been you and the woman beside him, your wife. And that girl, that girl might have been your daughter. Ebenezer Scrooge, she might have called you father. She might have been the springtime in the haggard winter of your life. Spirit, spirit, let me go. Show me no more. Listen now while they speak, Ebenezer. Elle, I saw an old friend of yours today. Who was it? Guess. Oh. How can I? I have no... Oh, I know. Mr. Scrooge. Mr. Scrooge, it was. I passed his office window. It wasn't shuttered. And there was a candle inside, so I couldn't help seeing him. His partner, Marley, lies at the point of death, I hear. And there Scrooge sat, all alone. Quite alone in the world, I do believe. Spirit! 
Spirit, I can't bear anymore. Leave me. Haunt me no more. Take me back. Take me back. On the stroke of two, Scrooge awakened suddenly and sat bolt upright in his own bed. He remembered the words of Marley's ghost and wondered from which direction the second specter would appear. Then, as he sat in his bed, he became aware gradually of a great blaze of ruddy light, which seemed to shine upon him from the adjoining room. He got up softly and shuffled in his slippers to the door. It was his own sitting room, no doubt about that but it had undergone a surprising transformation. The walls and ceilings were so hung with living green that it looked a perfect grove, with every part of which bright gleaming berries glistened, and such a mighty blaze went roaring up from the chimney as had never been known in Scrooge's time or from many and many a winter season gone. An easy stayed upon this couch. There sat a jolly giant, glorious to see, who bore a glowing torch and shaped not unlike a horn of plenty, and held it up, high up, to shed its light on Scrooge as he came peeping around the door. Ha <laughs> ha Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> come in, come in, and know me better, man. Ooh. Ooh. I am the ghost of Christmas present. Look upon me. You've never seen the like of me before. You're... You're different from the other spirit. You're tall. Almost a giant. And that great torch you carry. Its light pours into the homes of the rich and poor alike. Our oh, spirit. Take me where you will. Last time I went against my will and learned a lesson which is working now. If you have anything to teach me, let me profit by it. Touch my robe, Ebenezer Scrooge. Touch my robe. Where you've brought me, spirit. A most humble dwelling in a most humble street. It's humble enough. Yet, there is happiness here. Who, who are these people? Who's that woman and the children? These are the family of your clerk, Bob Cratchit. His wife, dressed in a twice-turned gown, but brave in ribbons, laying the table for the Christmas dinner. And they're assisting her her daughter, Belinda, and the young man with his fork and the stuffing. That's Master Peter Cratchit and the two little Cratchits. Listen, Scrooge. Why, bless your heart alive, Martha, my dear. Merry Christmas to you. Oh, Merry Christmas, Mother. How late you are, my dear. Oh, we had a great deal of work to finish up last night and to clear away this morning. Well, never mind, so long as you're here now. Sit ye down before the fire and have a warm, Lord bless you. Where's Father? Oh, he's been to church with Tiny Tim. They'll be along directly. How is Tiny Tim, Mother? Any better at all? Sometimes I think he is. And sometimes I think, oh dear God, if anything should happen to Tiny Tim, my... Oh, father. You mustn't even think of such a thing. There's Tiny Tim. Merry Christmas, everybody. Martha, welcome, my dear. Oh, Merry Christmas, Father. And Tim. Merry Christmas, Martha. Oh, Tim, you darling. Oh, Father. <clears throat> oh, I'm so glad to be home. And we're so glad to have you home. And how did little Tim behave in church, Bob? Oh, 
as good as gold, better. I like church, mother. Oh, they sang the nicest songs. I hope people saw me there. Saw you there? But why, Tim? Well, don't you see, because I'm lame. And if they saw my crutch, it might be pleasant for them to remember on Christmas who it was made lame beggars walk and blind men see. Oh, bless you, my son. Ready to eat, Mother? Yes, children, we're all ready. Come, come, take your places now. And Bob, wait your turn. There's plenty. Stuffing and dressing and plum pudding for all of you. Martha, you take care of Tiny Tim. Yes, Mother. You see that he eats plenty. He must get tall and well. Now, sit down. Sit down, everyone. Now, my dears, shall we say grace? Dear Lord, we are thankful for all. Spirit, tell me if Tiny Tim will live. I see a vacant seat in the poor chimney corner and a crutch without an owner carefully preserved. Oh, no, 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 kind spirit. Say he'll be spared, say he will live. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, Ebenezer, the child will die. And for this, we are truly thankful. Amen. Amen. And now, my dears, a toast. A Merry Christmas to us all, and God bless us all. Amen. God bless us, everyone. And now, to Mr. Scrooge, the founder of the feast. The founder of the feast, indeed, who pays you all the 15 shillings a week. Oh, I wish I had a beer. I'd give him a piece of my mind to feast on, and I hope he'd have a good appetite for it. Oh, my dear children, Christmas Day. Well, it should be Christmas Day, I'm sure, on which one brings the health of such an odious, stingy, unfeely man as Mr. Scrooge. Now, you know he is, Bob. Nobody knows it better than you, poor fella. Christmas Day. I'll drink his health for your sake, and the days, but not the is. Long life to him, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. He'll be very merry and very happy, I have no doubt. And I say God bless him too, Mother, and everyone. Well, there was nothing of a very high mark in all this. They were not a fashionable family, these Cratchits. They were not well dressed. Their shoes were far from being waterproof, and their clothes were scanty and had known very likely the insides of a pawnbroker shop. But they were happy, grateful, pleased with one another, and contented with the time. When at last they faded, Scrooge had his eye upon them, and especially on Tiny Tim, until the very last. Many calls Scrooge made that night with the ghost of Christmas present. Down among the miners they went, who labor in the bowels of the earth, and out to sea among the sailors at their watch, dark, ghostly figures in their several stations. Much they saw, and far they went, and many places they visited, but always with a happy end. The spirit stood beside sick beds, and they were cheerful. On foreign lands, and they were close at home. By poverty, and it was rich. In almshouse, hospital, and jail, where vain man and his little brief authority had not made fast the door and barred the spirit out, the spirit left his blessing. It was a long night, if it was only a night. And it was strange, too, that 
while Scrooge remained unaltered in his outward form, the ghost grew older, clearly older. My life upon this globe is very brief, Ebenezer. It ends tonight at midnight. Hark, the hour has come. Oh, no, 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 not yet, not yet. There, there, there are still more things I wish to learn. These you will learn from still another spirit. Still another spirit, Ebenezer. Scrooge looked about for the ghost. It had vanished. And he found himself once more in his bed, in his dressing gown, and his nightcap on his head. He heard the clock strike. And then he remembered the prediction of old Jacob Marley. And lifting up his eyes, beheld the third spirit, a solemn phantom, shrouded in black, draped and hooded, coming towards him slowly and silently like a mist along the ground. I know you. You. You are the ghost of Christmas yet to come. You show me the shadows of things that have not happened, but will happen in the time before us. Answer me, spirit, ghost of the future. I fear you more than any specter I have seen. Yet, I know your purpose is to do me good. And as I hope to live, to be another man from what I was, lead on. Lead on. The night's waning fast and time's precious. Spirit, why? Why have you brought me here again? Here to Bob Cratchit's home. But it's, it's not the same. <laughs> what? Why is it so quiet? So very quiet here. <laughs> my son, my little son, tiny Tim, I loved him so. Oh, oh, mother dear, you mustn't. It's, it's almost time for father to be home. Don't let him see you crying. Yes, 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 Martha. He's late tonight. He walks slower than he used to, and yet I've known him to walk very fast indeed, with Tiny Tim on his shoulder. So have I, Mother. But he was light to carry, and his father loved him so, so that it was no trouble, no trouble at all. Good evening, my dear. Oh, Bob, Bob, you're home at last. But why are you so late? Yes. I'm sorry, my dear. I I went to the churchyard today. Mm. I wish you could have gone with me. It would have done your heart good to see how sweet green the place it is. But you'll see it often. I promised him. Yes, I promised Tiny Tim you'd walk there on Sunday. Father, Father dear. It's God's will, Bob. I'm trying to understand it, my dear. My son. My little son, Tiny Tim. And how I loved him so. Oh, that's cruel. Cruel. Spirit, can you not give me one ray of hope that I may change all of that? That tiny Tim might live. Where are you taking me now? Here? On a common street? Spirit? 
What is there for me to learn here? Who? Who are those women? I don't know much about it either way. I only know he's dead. <laughs> when did he die? Last night, I believe. Well, it's likely to be a very cheap funeral. For a family life, I didn't have anybody to go to it. Hey, suppose we make up a party and volunteer. I don't mind going if a lunch is provided. <laughs> <laughs> Come to think of it, I'll bet I was his best friend. What? Wait. We used to nod to each other when we met in the street. <laughs> Spirit, help me. Who is this man that died? Is there no one to mourn the poor creature? No one to follow him to the grave? Perhaps they'll give him a green grave at least, like poor Tiny Tim. Perhaps... Spirit, where are we now? Merciful heaven, a churchyard overrun by grass and weeds, choked with too much bearing, desolate, lonely, crumbling gravestones. Spirit, before I draw near to that gravestone, answer me one question. Are are these shadows of things that will be? Or are they shadows of things that may be only will? Will you not speak to me, spirit? What is that grave to which you point? Now I see it. There's writing on that stone. The name on the gravestone is Ebenezer Scrooge. Ebenezer Scrooge? Oh, no, 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 spirit. No, 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 no. Hear me. Please, I'm not the man I was. Why show me this if I am past all hope? Tell me <clears throat> that I can change these dreadfully dark shadows you have shown me by an altered life. I'll honor Christmas in my heart. I'll try to keep it all the year. I'll live in the past, the present, and the future, and I'll not shut out the lessons that they teach. Tell me, spirit. Oh, go on, go on, tell me. Tell me that I can sponge away the writing on that stone, spirit. I beg you, spirit. I beg you. Spirit, I promise. I promise on my knees. Uh, I promise. I promise I'll, I'll, why, what's this, what, oh. it's my own dream, oh, I'm home, I'm home in my own bed, in my own room. And the sun, the sun shining, it's clear, it's bright, no fog. Oh, what a beautiful day! Oh, glorious! <laughs> glorious! Hey, boy! Oh, boy! Yes, sir? Um, what's, what's today? What's that, sir? What day is it, my fine fellow? Today yes. is Christmas Day. Aha! <laughs> Christmas Day! <laughs> oh, then I haven't missed it. The spirit 
Jesus have done it all in one night. All in one night. Heaven be praised. How is that, sir? Ha. Ah. Oh, hey, listen, my lad. Uh, you know where the poulterer is in the next street? I should say I do. Aha! Aha! <laughs> An intelligent boy! A remarkable boy! Tell me, do you know if they sold the prize turkey that was hanging in the window? The one as big as me. <laughs> Oh, what a delightful boy. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Yes, my buck. It's hanging there now, sir. Ah, that's wonderful. Go down, will you? And tell him to send it to Bob Cratchit and his family on Broad Street. And mind you, they're not to know who paid for it. <laughs> Go along. Hurry, hurry, my lad. Oh, here, here, here. Wait a minute. Here's half a crown for your trouble. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And a Merry Christmas, sir. <laughs> Have a Merry Christmas to you, my boy. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Uh, I'm as light as a feather. <laughs> as happy as an angel. Oh, God, God, God. I'm as merry as a schoolboy. <laughs> merry Christmas! <laughs> a merry Christmas to everybody. A happy new year to all the world. <laughs> Woo! Oh, hallelujah! <laughs> Scrooge dressed quickly and hurried outside, down to the bustling thoroughfare below. The sun was bright, the air was crisp, and the scent of pine and cinnamon wafted upon the cool breeze. Scrooge took a long, deep breath and stretched his grateful arms upwards to the sky. Then, as if by some miraculous twist of fate, he encountered the very same man and woman who had visited his counting house in order to solicit donations for the poor and destitute. My dear sir, my dear lady, how do you do? I, I, I beg your pardon? Well, you, sir, madam, Aren't you the lady and gentleman who came to my office in regard to that charity? Why, uh, sir. A Merry Christmas to you both. Why, why, why well, thank you, uh, Mr. Scrooge. Uh, allow me to ask your pardon, both of you. And will you have the goodness to accept uh, this donation? Oh. oh, but Lord bless me. My dear Mr. Scrooge, are you serious? If you please. Now, not a farthing less. <laughs> a great many back payments are included in it, I assure you. Hey, will you do me that favor? Well, my dear sir, I, I don't know what to say to such generosity. Now, don't say anything, please. Just accept it on behalf of all those less fortunate souls that you assist. Accept it with my best wishes and my most humble apologies. We will. We will indeed. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I am much obliged to you. I, I thank you 50 times. Bless you. Merry Christmas. The next morning, Scrooge was early at his office. He went early for a reason. If he could only be there first and catch Bob Cratchit coming late. That was the thing he'd set his heart upon. And he did it. Yes, he did. The clock struck nine. No Bob. The quarter passed. 
know Bob. Scrooge sat with his door wide open that he might see him come in. And at last he came. His hat was off before he opened the door, his comforter too. He was on his stool in a jiffy, driving away with his pen as if he were trying to overtake nine o'clock. Fifteen, twenty-one, six, and carry one, twenty-four, carry the two, thirty-one, and eight, and nine, and nine. <sighs> Hello, you Cratchit. Yes, sir. Step this way, Cratchit, if you please. Yes, sir. At, at, at once, sir. Cratchit. What do you mean by coming in at this time of day? I, 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 I'm very sorry, sir. I, I, I'm, I'm behind the time. You are? Yes, yes. I think you are. Oh, it, it's only once a year, Mr. Scrooge. It shall not be repeated. I, I was making a rather merry yesterday. I'll tell you what, my friend. And I'll not stand this sort of thing any longer. And therefore, Bob Cratchit, I'm about to raise your salary. <clears throat> Mr. Scrooge, are you quite yourself, sir? <laughs> no, no, thank heaven. I'm not quite myself. Merry Christmas, Bob. <coughs> Merry Christmas, my good fellow. A merry, merrier Christmas than I've given you in many a year. I shall raise your salary and we'll see what we can do for Tiny Tim and the rest of your family, huh? <laughs> we will discuss it this very afternoon over a Christmas bowl of smoking bishop. And Bob, make up the fire. Make it up and, and buy another coal scuttle before you dot another ride, Bob Cratchit. <laughs> Scrooge was better than his word. He did it all, and infinitely more. To Tiny Tim, who did not die, he was a second father. He became as good a friend, as good a master, as good a man as the good old city knew or any other good old city, town, or borough in the good old world. Some people laughed <laughs> to see the alteration in him, but he let them laugh. He little heeded them. His own heart laughed, and that was quite enough for him. He had no further dealings with spirits and it was always said of him that he knew how to keep Christmas well if any man alive possessed the knowledge. May that truly be said of all of us. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us, everyone. You've been listening to the Collinsport Theatre of the Airwaves production of A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Tonight's production featured the following ensemble cast. Nancy Barrett as Martha Cratchit and Ensemble. David Hennessy as Fred, Scrooge's nephew, Belle's husband, Boy at the End, and Tiny Tim. Jerry Lacey as the ghosts of Jacob Marley, Fezziwig, and Narrator 5. Lara Parker as Belle, Narrator 6 and Ensemble. Mitch Ryan as the Ghost of Christmas Present, Narrator 1 and Ensemble. Catherine Lee Scott as Narrator 2 and Ensemble. Marie Wallace as Mrs. Cratchit, Narrator 3 and Ensemble. James Storm as Bob Cratchit. David Selby as Ebenezer Scrooge. And Alexandra Moltke Isles as the Ghost of Christmas Past. Produced, directed, and additional adaptation by Richard Halpern. Technical direction was provided by Todd Felderstein. Special graphics were created by Patrick McRae. Special effects and music were provided by Ansel Farage. Dark Shadows, A Christmas Carol is not a Dan Curtis production.
This is one of your announcers, Richard Halpern, along with... Ansel Farage, your other announcer. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas to all, and, and to all a good night. Ah, family, it is time. <sighs> Ha 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 